when you are decomposing a vector in applications, think for example about a force vector or a velocity vector of a fluid, you often want to decompose such a vector in two components, a component inside a plane and a component orthogonal to a plane. If you think about the velocity field, this component orthogonal to the plane will give you the flux, the amount of fluid flowing through the plane. This means that we actually want to divide our free space into two parts, in this case a plane and a line. Let us look at the line more closely. The line is a subset of R3, but not just any subset. If we take subsets, we would like to be able to add factors in this subset such that the resulting factor is still in the subset. In our line, or flux case, we would like to be able to add two factors on the line and still be on the line with the resulting factor, since this will just give us a total flux. If we generalize this to a plane, this means that we would like any linear combination of factors in the plane to be again in the plane. These special subsets of Rn with this property, which is called closed undertaking linear combinations have their own name. They're called subspaces. We will encounter them a lot in linear algebra and actually in applications too, but often without mentioning this explicitly. In this video we will learn the precise definition of a subspace and we will also encounter some examples in R2. So a subspace is a subset of R2. In this case we will look to R2. We have a subset of R2 over here, some random number of points without structure. Well, a subspace does have some structure, so this subset over here probably won't be a subspace. The second subset of R2, containing only those two points, looks a lot nicer, so maybe this second set will be a subspace of R2. Let us look into that. Let us look at the precise definition. Well, a subset H of Rn is a subspace if, first of all, the zero vector has to be in H. Well, we can repair that. We can try to make this second set a subspace by adding the zero vector over here. Oh. Okay, so. Is this second set now a subspace? Well, let's take a look at the second property. If we have two factors in H, then the sum also has to be in H. So I have two factors over here. Now, uh, I want the sum to be again in H. So I would need to add this factor over here. But then I have three factors, and uh, for example, the sum of this factor and that factor also has to be in H. That means that this one, needs to be there too. And uh, then I can add this one and this one, so this one has to be there too. Okay, this will give me a lot more points. Let us look at the third property. If I have a factor in H, then any multiple C times U also has to be in H. So if this one is in H, then any multiple has to be in H too. So this one and that one and that one and that one. Oh gosh. So if I have two points in H, if I want this to be a subspace, I get a whole lot of other points which also need to be in H. So if I want to turn this set of only two factors into a subspace, I would have to add a lot of factors. Well, in fact, you can already guess, I have to add all factors of R2 in order to turn this subset into a subspace. So what can we have in R2? Well, we can have this very silly subspace over here. If we have only the zero vector, then one is okay. Any two factors, the sum has to be in H. Well, the only factor in H is the zero vector. Zero plus zero is again zero, so that's fine. And any multiple of the zero vector is again a zero vector, so it is in H. So this set consisting only the zero vector is a subspace. A silly one, but okay. And then all of our two is also called a subspace of R2 because it satisfies the properties. 
of a subspace. The zero vector is in R2, so it's in H, and the, the other two properties are also satisfied. So all of R2 is also a subspace of R2. Those two possibilities uh, are, are subspaces which we will always have. Can we have something else? Because this seems a bit trivial. Well, let us take one point and we have to add the zero vector. If I have only one vector, any multiple of this vector also has to be in the subspace due to property number three. That means all vectors of the on the line over here need to be in the subspace. But then property three is satisfied. Property one is satisfied. Look at property two. If I have two vectors, the sum of the two also has to be in the subspace. But if I take the sum of two vectors on the line, I will still be on the line, so I will still be in H. So a line is also a subspace of R2. And there we have our possibilities, because as you saw here already, as soon as you start to add more points not on the line, you immediately get all of R2. So we have the three property possibilities, only the zero vector, lines through the origin, or all of R2. But it really looks like we are talking about spans. So should, is there a relation between subspaces and spans? That's the subject of the next video.